You are with World News Today from BBC World. I'm George Alagaya. Now, it's often said the world is a global village or at least a global city. Now, two friends are trying to prove it. Alex Horn and Owen Powell have set themselves the task of trying to find a person from every country in the world who lives here in London. Their quest for the world in one city was launched on the 24th of October last year. That's United Nations Day. More than seven months later, as their website shows, they have ticked off more than half of the UN's 192 official nationalities. Well, Alex Owen, uh, Alex and Owen, rather, join me now in the studio. Thank you both for, for coming in. So, um, Alex, what gave you the, the idea uh, for, for doing this? Um, well, we're, I think we're both quite disappointed England football fans. <laughs> and it was, it was kind of kicked off during the World Cup last year when England got knocked out. Uh, we both used to collect these sticker albums when we were little. And, uh, and after England got knocked out, we, we spent a lot of time watching the matches with people from those nationalities in London. So we watched the Swedish matches in a Swedish pub, Brazilian matches in a Brazilian pub, and then the final in, in an Italian bar. So nobody can call you kind of nerdy or obsessed or anything like that, can No, they? we're, we're mm. pretty well-balanced mm. individuals. Um, I'm just interested, um, Owen, that, that you're going for 192 countries, as I just said, yeah. and yet I gather in the last census in, in London, they said there, there are actually something like 243 countries. Yeah, it's that interesting. People said yeah. they came from. So why the discrepancy? People do tend to self-define as, as slightly different, uh, different areas. So we, we've gone for 192 because uh, basically it's easier for us. It's less people to find. And uh, they have, we have to stop somewhere. I think the, the FIFA has, for example, over 200 uh, countries represented for football as well. So there are places like Kurdistan, uh, like Palestine, like Taiwan, that don't count as a UN member state, but still are seen by some people that live there as, as countries. So uh, when we find people from those places, we are talking to them as well, but also we want to set ourselves a, a definite limit so we know when we've finished, otherwise it could go on for forever. Right. Um, Alex, were there any, any, are there any themes that you've discovered? I know you're only halfway through, but any themes running through the people who you've met, you've found, and, and their lives? Yeah, I mean, on a very superficial level, everyone has said it's, it's a very expensive place to live. Everything costs a lot of honk. It's a very expensive city to live in. But I think on a sort of a nicer note, the main thing that everyone said is that they love London because of its cosmopolitan nature. I think we, because, I mean, we realised very quickly that most of our friends actually are from Britain. Uh, not anymore. We've got mm. plenty now. But, um, but people from Britain tend to maybe more insular and don't, embrace the cosmopolitan nature of the city, but people have said they, they love the fact that it's a magnet for all these different countries. But are, are these people then that you're, you're, you're meeting, Owen, are they, are they meeting Brits or are they, is, is there a kind of this sometimes, cosmopolitan world that's kind of Sometimes they on? find it quite hard to break into social groups that are just sort of English or British people and uh, well, what's interesting is people tend to mix with other people from overseas, so uh, the Swedish lady you met is mar married to a guy from Benin, uh, the guy from Syria you met is married to a German lady, uh, the guy, woman from Kazakhstan actually has now married a Brit who's a, a cricket enthusiast, so she's finding out about cricket so it's, uh, it's yeah, very that interesting must be your head and if you're from Kazakhstan yeah, trying to work out yeah. well, she's actually, she, was, she was an ex-KGB rocket scientist so she's got some level of intellectual stimulation already but uh, cricket yeah. means proving a bit too much um, the, the, um, you've got people from all walks of life uh, coming through that, haven't you that, that, that you've found uh, butlers bar owners that kind of thing yep rocket scientists uh, designers architects uh, artists, uh, musicians, publishers, perfumiers, people that hand out the free papers in the evening. So it's a, it's a whole range of people. We didn't want to find 192 cleaners. That was something we were definitely avoiding. And we've found people that really do represent a whole different host of, of things. Now, I, I said you were only halfway through. So what are the countries that, that you're still, um, still looking at? The ones for? we're really struggling with are the small island nations in the South Pacific. So um, very small uh, islands there. It's a place like Tuvalu, uh, Kiribati. So if anyone out there has uh, friends or family in London, then please do get in contact and let us know where they are and where we can find them, that would be great. Also, lots of uh, African countries. There are over... I mean, Africa has more than uh, a quarter of the world's country, so it's, that's another I, big problem. I, I just noticed you, the top of your list uh, there was Angola. Well, I met an Angolan waiter Brilliant. yesterday. Well, that's, that's, oh, that's exactly fantastic. what the product is about. It's how many people we actually bump into every day. So right. did, did you find out that he's from Angola? Yeah, no, I did. Mm. I asked him because I, he, he spoke Portuguese. So, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll tell you who he is. Yeah. Well, All right, thank you. Question. Alex, Owen, thank you yeah. both very much. Thank you very much. And that's about it for...